This episode of Unqualified is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. On the drive to and from my parents' house in Washington State, we almost always stop at two particular McDonald's, one in Salem, Oregon, and another in Eureka, California. At the moment, we are in the parking lot of the Salem location, and I just finished a Big Mac and fries. Even though we are just passing through, I appreciate the familiarity and feeling of community. The other day, I was looking through my mother-in-law's photo album and came across a photo where she and her friends are standing in front of a McDonald's wearing their cheerleading uniforms. I usually call my mother-in-law New Mom, but her name is Marsha. Under the photo, Marsha had written a note and I clocked her in to letting me read it here. San Bernardino, California. I have so many memories of this McDonald's over the years. My father took me there on what I think was opening day. What a thrill it was as a young girl to order a chocolate shake, hamburger, and french fries. Then there was the time when my cousin Hinda and I were given a tour and allowed to take dill pickles by the cupful out of a huge barrel. We must have eaten a hundred pickles each. Everyone in my family knows the story of how I accidentally missed the ketchup container and dipped a fry into my milkshake. Now when I dip fries in my shake, it's on purpose. I remember when I was 12 years old, my mother and my cousin Noel Novak, Larry's brother, picked me up from dance class and we went for dinner to celebrate Noel's graduation from high school. Years later, when I was in high school, we would go to McDonald's every Friday night after the football game. I wish you could see this photo. Marcia couldn't remember if they won the game that night, but everyone is smiling as if they did. Wherever your local McDonald's is, there's nothing better than that wonderful feeling of community. Well, maybe that feeling is tied with eating a Big Mac. McDonald's, I'm loving it. microphone will you please say hi so josh hello 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 my dear friend josh get closer to the mic yes. sorry wow you sound it's awfully loud fuck you sim, well, yeah, yeah, I, fuck I you, sim. <laughs> well you're the first person who said it before me <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the club <laughs> um all right well uh i'm just so happy Britt. thank you so much for being here Thank you for having me. And, I could cry. Well, um, uh, you know, I have trouble crying. Oh, I was going to say, I feel, uh, yeah, no, nah, I don't know. Do you um, have, okay, acting wise, yeah. do you have trouble crying? Um, no, I mean, some, sometimes I'm having like a day where I just don't want to do it, you know, or I'm just like resisting and like, I don't want to cry. Once I did a show on the CW called Life Unexpected and every episode I cried, like it literally, it was written in every episode. Damn. And yeah, sometimes I would just go to work and I'd be like, I, I did this yesterday, you guys. Like, I don't want to do it over and over again. But for the most part, I think it was the boot camp. I have a question. I have a question for you. Yeah. When you okay, cry, you when s- you cry, on, <laughs> <laughs> when you cry on camera, do you need one of those menthol sticks or you just like tap into something? Okay. I, no, the menthol, I think I may be allergic to the menthol. I tried it once when I first started acting and uh and my face blew up like a pumpkin so i think i'm allergic or something i don't know something's wrong it doesn't work for me it's so when wonderful you, when you it's cry, a wonderful you tool really, <laughs> you use a menthol stick to cry well i listen when you know sometimes when well, first of all i don't you know me i rarely cry you're not a crier yeah, that's yeah, true i'm not a crier i'm highly sensitive i could cry over anything really i think that's really healthy I think Maybe. what I've done is I've built up like a weird defense mechanism in terms of like the show of vulnerability is um, like uh, my mom. I'm so grateful that she raised me to be sort of a somewhat tough, independent person. Mm-hmm. But part of um, part of that was 
um, a, a little bit of a shame of crying. Mm. And so, and that kind of vulnerability. So that it is really unbelievably embarrassing for me to cry. Ugh. Oh, and, that's And killer. she's upstairs. Will you go talk to her? I've got to have a conversation <laughs> after this. Like, let her cry. Hold her. Say it's okay. Yeah. I don't know how healthy it is. It's probably healthy to have the guard, but then also... You know, I think, yeah, I, it, it, I, it, I think it's, it's, I think ultimately it's been really beneficial because I've worked with a lot of really domineering people mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. this industry as we all have or whatever, if you're in this industry. And so I think it's really good to be able to, um, kind of not show that, that vulnerability a little bit. So which smart. Protect yourself. It, it sucks because <laughs> you should be able to. But people can kind of hold it against you to some degree. Yeah, it's true. But um, anyway, so... Especially being a chick. I get a weird fucking kick out of that menthol stick. No way. Like, sometimes no, I jealous. do it for fun. Stop. I don't want to <laughs> do it. I'm so jealous. She does, by the way. She brings it out, and then she'll, like, start... I have, I have like, three of them upstairs. No way. But, yeah. Just to practice? Or, like, I practice? Just, yeah, I Funny. It feels good to me. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, it's good. It's weird. You know what it is? It's your body saying, I want to cry. cry. I know. <laughs> so, like, grab the menthol stick and fake it. Totally. <laughs> totally. Um, well, I'm so glad you are here tonight. Thank you so much. I know. I do all the crying like, for the both of us. You're here in my super weird... Uh, like clearly we have never had an interior decorator <laughs> come to this house so that's great it's got the personal touch yeah the personal touch of <laughs> hodgepodge weirdness of like my sweet husband and i not not necessarily caring about what is in our home <laughs> hey do you sister do you thank you um but yeah thank you so much for being here thanks um, for having me josh thanks for being here too Britt, thanks for let me sit in on this. By the way, Josh, we, uh, let's just say that your music video with Anna launched wow. today. Yeah. Which, well, which we're releasing this on Tuesday. So, it, so if if they are going to find your video online, where would they find it? I guess YouTube, right? Okay. So tell us the name of the song. It's tell called us. "Hold On to Me." Anna um, starred in it, and it came out today on Facebook. They premiered it. We had a big day. We had to do a live interview. Which we did well. Yes. I feel like I, I talked way too much. No. Um, I feel like I did too. No. I did. No, you didn't. Well, I don't think anybody wanted to hear me talk. No. Well, yeah. you did your best to like not be in the video too. You just. I'm not in the video. That was you the not in the video. In the, in the, I'm Josh. talking about the video that we shot the, with the interview. Oh yeah. <laughs> I kept, like, slowly moving off. <laughs> so, Britt, I have, like, a list of men in professions that you should not date. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm cool. glad I'm here for this. Because this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have, right. Because you, you know where this is going, Josh, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And I got to tell you, so, number one, mm -hmm. and, and listen, I, break, I broke my own rules because I, I married an actor. Oh, that was one of the rules? Oh, I've got a whole list. Okay, got it. But um, number one is magician. Number two is musician mm. and less classical. And here's what I always, because I talk about this a few times on the podcast, but Josh is totally, and every time I talk about it, I always think, oh my gosh, Josh is the exception. Because you are, uh, you, I mean, listen, everyone's, the exception I you know these are like ridiculous rules you say that, that but every Tuesday however <laughs> it's like every week they're like you know that list comes up <laughs> and I'm on my run and I'm like what the heck like, <laughs> why am I being attacked yeah, like, <laughs> you are the true exception <laughs> yeah thanks Brett <laughs> anytime you know what maybe podcast technician Mike Mike is <laughs> Mike there we go that's terrible <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen, listen, it's, it, it's a ridiculous set of rules, but or it's a ridiculous list, but, um, but kind of fun to talk about, but, uh, and I, you know, an actor's totally on there. I have a whole list of, uh, you know, I don't have to bore you with all this stuff, but I love a good um, list and I love actors and I love musicians. I love creative people, mm -hmm. but point being though, Josh is complete, like uh, such an exception because not only is he unbelievably talented he's also 
incredibly modest and um I, I, and very humble there's so many amazing things happening with your career right now and we're just so proud of you yeah, ah, guys, yeah. Thank here's you. to you josh ah, thanks, guys. yep thanks. here's to you thank you sam thank yeah, you of course This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by State Farm. And in honor of their surprisingly great auto insurance rates, I'm going to tell you about a particularly surprising day on set. It takes me a long time to read a script. For almost every line of dialogue, I will stop to figure out why my character would say it, how it fits in the conversation, and how it's going to come out of my mouth. Between the lines, there are larger chunks of text which describe everything else happening in the scene. Maybe what a room looks like, what characters are wearing, and what they're doing. As I often underestimate how long everything in my life takes, I know I can make up some time by reading those larger chunks a little faster. I got the script for Overboard about six months before we started production. I read it in my warm living room, wearing comfortably warm clothes, sipping from a warm mug of tea. Somehow, it never occurred to me that when you jump off a boat in the middle of the ocean, the water is surprisingly cold. And it doesn't get any warmer on take two. Here at Unqualified, we love State Farm because they provide coverage that meets your needs at a surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by ZocDoc. Who gets excited about trying a new restaurant that has two out of five stars? When it comes to finding healthcare, don't ratings matter even more? ZocDoc is a free app where you can compare doctors, read reviews from real patients, and even make same-day appointments. When I finally called to reschedule my dentist appointment, I was told that my dentist had been retired for nearly three years. In my defense, parking was a nightmare. Through ZocDoc, I found a new dentist who had great reviews, took my insurance, and whose office was actually within walking distance. I was also able to book an appointment instantly without talking to a receptionist who made me feel guilty about not having my teeth cleaned for three years. My new dentist didn't make me feel guilty either and only suggested I floss a little more often. Whether you need a primary care physician, dentist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, eye doctor, or other specialist, ZocDoc makes healthcare easy. Now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash unqualified and download the ZocDoc app. Sign up for free and book a top-rated doctor who might be available as soon as today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash unqualified. Um, but you. speaking of actors, I, I mean, I've always wondered this because I'm, I'm not an actor, but you see... You always, when it comes to relationships, you always see actors dating other actors, and you know, I feel like is it because is it because you guys understand each other's schedules? You understand the fact that if you're gone a, gone for a long time, mm-hmm. do you, or is it just like this mutual attraction for the craft that you guys are both creative? Well, so you before, have that sense. Like what? Before we force Britt to answer this question, <laughs> I know. I, cause I, cause well, I, I know, know you're dating an actor. I am. Yeah, because <laughs> I know where. You, because we talked about this, yeah. But um, because before we force, I'm willing to answer, yeah. But I, um, I, when I had dated, like, so I grew up in Seattle. I had done like some small acting gigs, but it was a small enough market that I felt like, um, I, like I don't know, a medium sized fish. Mm-hmm. So I did like. You know, training. I was just one of the few actors in Seattle that, uh, like, I was actually able to make a tiny bit of money. Yeah. And um, I dated two, I dated, uh, like, I really have <laughs> dated about four people in my life, but two of them said to me, <laughs> um, my, they, the, the quote that I remember by both of them was uh, my mom told me I should never date an actress. And it was in sort of in the middle of like a heated argument. Yes. And, and I view myself 
I, I don't know if I'm completely off base about this, but even though I'm an actor, I view myself as a relatively undramatic person because I get my fulfillment of drama out of what I do, mm-hmm. so I don't seek it um, in my personal life. And so it, it, the the idea of that kind of patron that sort of patronizing element from somebody who didn't understand kind of my passion and mm-hmm. or or at least like maybe wanted to believe that um I, I I don't know. So 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 dating an actor has um it's very unique challenges, but it also has at least you can't ever say to me. Mm-hmm. My mom <laughs> told me to never date an actor. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I know that you are dating an actor, so I don't know what your thoughts are about yeah. that. If it's like healing or... I mean, I think it's... I don't know. I mean, you've probably experienced it in your own relationship. But for me personally, it's been, like you said, really nice to to have someone who gets the schedule thing. And you hate to have a relationship be about the schedule. But... Right. Um, but it is. It's really nice to know that if you don't, you know, if if you don't check in a bunch of times over the course of like sixteen hours, it's because the other person's probably been working for the last sixteen hours. Or, you know, also just um, it's been really nice because we're so young. You know, we're just mm-hmm. constantly like flying around doing our jobs, and uh, so our commitments are like each other, and then our jobs, and um, and so we're able to balance it. Uh, for the both of us, you know, which is really nice. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of great things about it. Don't you think, too, though, that because our industry demands full commitment in order Mm -hmm. to succeed, Mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing, whatever element in the industry you're doing, whether you're, you know, agent, manager, Mm -hmm. lawyer, uh, musician, like whatever element in the entertainment industry, it demands 100% my listeners love it when it clear my throat yes that raspy sound that's <laughs> nice <laughs> the mucus that's some sweet ferrous mucus right there <laughs> but uh but because it really does demand it's a t- it, it, it demands everything and so you have to you have to be with a partner who understands uh, that if i don't prioritize this mm-hmm. I'm not going to, and you know, and hopefully you get to the place when you're, you know, in your 30s and 40s or 50s or whatever, where you get to pick and choose a little bit, and you get a little bit of relaxation, mm-hmm. and you don't. It doesn't have to. You, you know, you can. It's not you know, nonstop. It, yeah, yeah, you don't have to have your um, foot on the pedal. Hey, Sim, you know I love a good car <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> Oh yeah, God. I try not to keep them foot on the so pedal. A fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's yeah like, you're it's right. Like, and he, yeah, he, I n- I've never found that um, that he's like taken it personally if I can't make him number one all the time, you know. And that's probably hard to come by if they don't get it. You know? Now, is it different if your if your significant other? Who's also an actor is not working. Is there ever any kind Ooh, of resentment? Is that's a like, good question. What, what happens when that happens? Oh, I know what that. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that's like. Oh my, my boyfriend works a lot. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. I yeah, I think there's ebbs and flows. I mean, I've definitely been on the other end of that where I've just yeah. been like hanging out for six months, you know. Um, but I'm but women now. handle it a little yeah. better than men. You think I'm, so? I'm sorry, men. No, I mean, we're, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a competition thing. I have no idea. No, I, I, I don't know. Women keep busy. Like they know how to, you know, women know how to like create hobbies and, you know, like go out with your girlfriends and have a good time and be productive. I feel like sometimes men just want to hang out. And we love reality television. It's true. It's true. I could sit on that couch all day and watch that reality show. It's true. I'm preoccupied. No, but I do. I think, um. Yeah, I, I mean, having dated um, some people that that maybe weren't as driven as as I was, or uh, yeah, I think it's really hard. I think it's really hard. It would be hard. I feel like. Yeah. Josh, do you have? Uh, I what feel you like you're. My kinda... wife's an actress, and I'm super happy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have nothing to complain about. No, but do you think that like? Um, I mean, do you think that men have a harder time with um, 
with with dealing with the your other success. Yeah. Yeah, I could see do. that for sure. I mean, there was a time when our my wife Aria was like killing it, and I'm like, oh, you know, that was tough. Oh, you know, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I look forward to doing that at some point. Yeah. You know, it is tough for sure. Yeah. But I think it motivates you as well. No. Shame, yeah. Shame is a huge motivator. Shame always does it. Yeah. But there's, but there's also. I mean, was there ever any jealousy at all? No, never. But I'm, but there are couples where there, That's where there is jealousy. You're healthy. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Um, but we're also not in the same. Well, she's a musician too. So, but I mean, it's no, because I, I just I root for her like I root for you. Yeah, I root for you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm That's rooting for you a, not too. Yeah, you know? you're about you. That's but. That's great. But yeah, I've definitely been in relationships where I felt like the more, uh, the much more driven um, person, and out of that comes, you know, a lot of confusion. Mm. And I don't know if I would feel that way. Like, I mean, I, I mean, Chris, my husband has had like the last two years have been like, g- like. Crazy! <laughs> He's like, like this, like huge, massive global movie star, and I'm so proud of him, and he so deserves it. And um, I, uh, you know, I just want a big old boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Hook me up with the, the boat. So wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The takeaway is get me the boat, baby. <laughs> Like a three hundred foot one, <laughs> and you guys are all invited, we do, wait. including so my excited. listeners. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm betting on the boat now too. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you are so gonna get top deck. Oh, thank God. I'm trying to work on my tan. It's great. <laughs> what do I want? <laughs> now, now you got me thinking about what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, no, I really wouldn't mind, like, a, I don't know, who wouldn't mind, like, a small island, yeah. let's say, in the Mediterranean? Sure. <laughs> People do it. People do it all the time. A camp. A I've camp. always, you know, I've dreamt about the camp. I talk about the camp on my Twitter. Yeah. Describe the camp. I know you want to be, um, you want to be the uh, theater director? The, yeah. That's what you want. When you have your own camp, well, you're going to have your own. If you're a dream camp, Anna, yeah. describe your. And, and I want you to find a role for Brit as well in this well, camp. Well, I, I, oh. she can choose her role, but. Okay, give her some options. Okay, I, I will. I have okay. some ideas. Okay, good. All right, let's, Brit, let's figure but it out. I got to tell you okay. something. <laughs> okay. I may be just the theater director, but well, I'm actually a lot more. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's scary. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> I'm also the secret director oh. of camp. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, so we're gonna have a camp. It's gonna be a little bit like um, I don't know, Ibiza. Oh, Ibiza. Without maybe quite as many throngs, <laughs> but maybe a few. <laughs> I don't know, but definitely some bikinis and, and uh, bubbles. I always see the bubbles in like the videos of Ibiza. <laughs> yeah. The like bubble right. uh, raves. I want that at the camp. <laughs> you want bubbles. a rave at the camp? Oh, no, no, just the bubbles. Oh, from just the, the bubbles. Rave. Oh, yeah. bubbles from the rave, but but uh, yeah. no ecstasy and Molly and. I just need the bubbles. Just the yes. bubbles. Yeah. Sure. Then there, there we go. Bubbles. She can be the bubble. Bubble in- your instructor, bit. yeah. Bubble instructor, got it. Mm, no, that no, sounds stupid. Okay, <laughs> no, no, no. I like it, but that could be a side project. Okay, I think. Um, okay, so I also can I be the athletic director? No, mm. why not? Because I don't want you to have anything that you want. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> got it. I mean, that's putting it straight. Um, no, thank you for being straightforward yeah. with me. <laughs> Sam, no, of course, you can be the athletic director. No. What kind of um, athletic programs are you yeah. But what do they do at camp? I mean, I've never been to a sleepaway well, camp. Well, then you but can't be I'm, the athletic director. No, but I, but I can do my own thing. All like, right, you know, give I know us they, some ideas. What's, what's Capture the Flag? Is that something? That's Oy, a thing, right? You're going to have to interview, I think. We're going to need a <laughs> real <laughs> interview here. <laughs> It's not going well All for right, you. Fine. I know, I know. Work on capture the All flag. Right. I'm going to figure out what capture the flag flag is first before I yeah. Fantastic. Sam, I will say, you are really qualified because you are a really good team builder. Mm. Aww. You're a great motivator. Mm. Thank you. And you could learn rules very quickly. I good. think yeah. I do abide Quick by the rules. Yes. Yes, when you listen. When I listen. Sure. When you focus on listening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're not getting impatient with me. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to pay attention right now. Yeah. 
Um, it's a great partnership. I can tell you that. Josh? Uh, uh, yeah. What would are you we be? talking about Sim? No, it, we're not. No. We're, not. we're, we're done with me. We're done with but me. But Josh, oh, if, if you were a ca- or part of our camp... I know you'd be like, oh, he's the musician guy, but I don't want to be that. That's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. I'd be that. like the guy that's like the curfew guy. What? what? You're not an enforcer. Wow. Absolutely not. You're no, like, but I'd be cool about it. No one would you ever would, take you yes, seriously. That's why you'd be terrible. That's no, but why everybody you can't would respect me because I'd be like, all right, it's time. What nope. If, <laughs> what if we gave you like the triangle? No, but you know? what about like, all the kids are having fun and you would probably be like, oh, man, they only live once. Oh. No, but they, I'd be like the guy that comes around and they're like... Uh, Mr. Josh said <laughs> it's time. It's time. I could totally see you as I don't know why as like uh the um uh like the like sort of the sea the guy that sneaks like, in drugs for the kids. Cool. I was just going to say you're letting <laughs> yeah, everyone smoke weed at that camp. <laughs> you're, way, you're taking way too long to finish that. Sentence. I feel like you would be the like instructor of an enemy. You like you would be like these are the I'd be like, stars I would be like, the, the Paul Rudd like, of your mm. camp. The Wet Hot American Summer Paul Rudd. Ooh. Okay. That's, is that, where, you're ta- is that where the re- that's the reference, right? I, yeah, I guess so. That's where okay. it's going, yeah. Mike, why does it feel like Sim is yelling in my ears? I know. I'm, I feel um, like I'm really, it's really hot right now. It's, it's not a, a level mic. issue for me, if that makes you feel <laughs> <better>. <laughs> you bring it's down nice. my level. It's just being nice. You need just more all time. I'm just trying to make you guys look bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened there. Oh, what if you were... Oh, wait, Josh. So what if you were like archery instructor? Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. Or I don't, know. Just, don't be. Don't sound so down about it. Yeah, yeah, Josh. That's a lot Jeez. of pressure. Uh, again, with the pressure, it's going to be yeah. a good time, my friend. It'll yeah. be yeah. a good time. Uh, you're the music guy, and that's all I'm I'd hire you for. Guy. Okay. What about what about like uh, paintballs? Like you're in charge of like the paintball fights. That'd be cool, but yeah, have you ever seen that. Ten Things I Hate About You? You know where they have yeah, yeah. paint yeah. inside the the water balloons, yeah. and then you like <laughs> throw them at people, and you get splattered. That sounds so fun. That's like my dream. What would you be? <laughs> Me, I, I think I, I, I don't know. Maybe yoga. I, I've always wanted to be. A, well, not always, but in the last like couple of weeks, I thought maybe I should become like a yoga. Instructor. But are the kids going to want to do yoga? Um. Well, they should. It's good for. It's good for them to be meditating. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I want to tell you. I feel like the quickest way. To, n- no offense against please. any. Uh, I, I love even been to a yoga, yoga. class. <laughs> I like the idea of being a teacher, not yeah. necessarily a yoga teacher. Sure. But I do feel like the quickest way to marry a really wealthy person, man or woman, mm-hmm. is to potentially be a yoga instructor. Yeah. Well, do you, do you know why? Why? Because you're so flexible. Well, yes, you're flexible. <laughs> but all, <laughs> it's but nice. also, I think it's because they're not, they're like really know how to handle their, their like emotions and they've got yeah. a handle on like life and they're centered and like really meditative and you're never really getting in fights. So they're just like chilling out. Right. That's smart. It's like they're in know. control. They're in and control. Then- but no uh, one knows. <laughs> that is smart. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm giving them too much credit. credit. No. <laughs> That's just no. what I'm looking for. <laughs> no, you're on to something. Maybe. Are we ready? Well, we're going to do, we do uh, it. We'll do some uh, not so rapid fire. Yeah. <gasps> not so rapid excited. fire. Okay. Not so rapid fire. Um, Sam, will you... Do you, you have yours up? No. This is what happens when my computer is not compatible with our the, printer. The, ah. No, this is what happens when Anna doesn't know how to use a computer. Because <laughs> she's <laughs> been acting... <laughs> this is how prepared we are here on Unqualified. <laughs> Everything is completely set up for you, Britt. It's great. I love this kind of flow. I'm not worried about anything. Very, very underproduced. <laughs> hey. Oh, okay. So we've got some submissions here. All right, is this is this what we've got here? Yeah. So these okay. are these are uh, questions from uh, from Twitter, mostly Twitter and Facebook. But this is, I think, right now these are all Twitter questions that we have for you. So we're just going to go back and f- we're we're going to read read the questions back and forth. So Anna, cool. why don't you why don't you start? Okay. This is from Sarah at Pizzas for Jen. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love pizza. I, I do love that <laughs> handle. Is that what you call that? You yeah, call it a handle. Yeah, Twitter I think handle. So, yeah. yeah. Very good. I'm so bad at social media. Me too. I don't know what that was. That was a big snort. That was a good one. It's like a side snort. 
Um, okay, if you were ever arrested and put in prison for a long time. Mm. Oh, wait, is this the right one? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, if you were ever arrested, I, I actually wanted to phrase this a little bit differently. But if but you, you can't phrase it differently because it's someone because else's now, question. I know, right now. Yeah, right. This is what she, like, like, let me just give you okay. a little. What she likes to do, mm-hmm. like, I'll come up with a bunch of questions and then be like, you know what? You know what would be more interesting? And then she'll take it to a different, a weird place. And it just makes it so. But these She's are so these much are, better. I can talk are, for a long are, time. These are. <laughs> These are taken straight from um, our listeners. Okay. okay. Um, so if you were ever arrested and put in prison for a long time, mm-hmm. what would your crime be? Oh, good. Oh, man. This is from At Pizzas for Jen, Sarah. Okay. Hi, Sarah. At Pizzas for Jen. I think my crime would be... Oh, man. It'd have to be something serious. I'm in prison for a long time, so it's got to be... It's got to be bad, right? I got to do something real bad. I know. What? Like kill a really bad person. Like Ooh, someone really, it. really, really bad. How would like, you do it? How would I do it with, you ready for this? Yep. An icicle. No like evidence. Base, base, uh, no evidence. Oh, an, oh, oh but icicle. wait, I'm going to jail. So who cares Rain about the evidence? Eye. Yeah, but like an icicle because you can penetrate through the body, but then there's, but then it'll melt eventually. So then there's no evidence. You know, this icicle is going to be uh, very sharp. I will, I will. But you can't do it just in the gut. You have to do it in the everywhere. eye. Everywhere. The eye. That's fine too. I'm because, cool with that. Because it has to imagine that it's, fall, you have to imagine that the icicle is falling. Oh, right? I see. I so see. You I can't see. do it in the gut. I can't gut. go for the gut. It's a stupid. That's a stupid way. No, no, no it's no, a no, wonderful. No, no, it's a no. brilliant way. No, but, the support, I, I but let's be honest. It's but no, bad. no. You just you just got to be. Are are you brave enough to stab somebody in the eye with an icicle? <laughs> I think so. If he's really bad, if this person's or she it could be a woman. Oh, that'd be even more insane. Oh man, yeah. I don't even know who it'd be. I don't even know those kind of bad people. Maybe like Robert Brit? Durst, if he really did it. I really think you. I, first mm-hmm. of all, I think. You can do it. Okay. I and I, th- and I think he did it. You I think, think Robert did. Durst did yes, it? Yes, All right. So he gets an icicle to the eye ball. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Somehow you got found out <laughs> because he ended up having like a camera. Yes. Like, <laughs> Robert Durst, he's a smart man. You had the perfect murder all planned out. It's true. I've thought about oh, this a long time. But then you told. <gasps> I told someone. You told your, you told your best friend and she betrayed you. Because she was oh jealous. <gasps> then I she got wanted away with to sleep murder. with your man. Yes, that's got to be it. Who was it? Which best friend? Because <laughs> she's got to go to jail now, too. She's the next on my list. <laughs> oh, man, this could, this could go so far. Um, okay, so... Um, at That's My Lobster. <laughs> oh, at, at That's My Lobster. That's a Friends reference. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah, that's my lobster. Like you're my lobster. I think. I think it's a Friends reference. I was just reading a piece about how Friends is hugely popular with people in their twenties. Yeah, well. Right now. I'm yeah. in my twenties. Like the syndication, the reruns are. Me. Yeah, and the theory that I read um, was that because it was like a little bit, of, it was a less of a like hyper social media time. Mm. Like there was a piece. It was like sort of a like a little bit of a pre nine eleven sort of. Like a, I don't know. I thought it was kind of fa- a fascinating theory yeah. about why friends um, resonates with people in their twenties. Yeah, and more the, so. The, I this, mean, it does sound true. I mean, just from what I know, I know a lot of people in their twenties, and a lot of them are huge. Even today, I was just telling someone I was coming here, and uh, and my friend Brooke was like, "Oh my gosh, I love Anna Ferris. She did that episode in Friends, you know, where she plays like Monica and Chandler's baby's mama." And I was like, "Oh my gosh, yes, that was just on our television the other day. That very episode." So I think it just, I don't know, in our lives more so. It than- was a really happy, optimistic show. Yeah, I guess. And about sort of like you know, in its beautiful simplicity, it was like. Yeah, just about it was really well done show. I guess. Yeah, yeah, and about friends. I never understood how Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox could afford that apartment. Yeah, right. Did not but make no, sense. No, no, no. What? Rent control. You didn't know this. Oh, Courtney Cox. Oh, that's right in the it? episode. Courtney yes. Cox's grandmother mm. had rent control. They had to pretend they addressed this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. So that you were a real it. Friends lover. It. You'd know this. Yeah. Yeah. I did love Friends. I mean, I missed that episode. Fuck you, Sam. Sorry, uh, Britt, this is a running theme. Yeah. I t- Fuck I, you, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> you can say it at any point. Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's kind of fun. It is really Poor fun. Sam. I know. 
<laughs> no, he holds his own. Uh, he gives me shit. I, yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, wait. Oh, yeah. So that's my lobster. Any weird secret talent? Which is kind of such a talk show question. Right. But it's hard. Um, but I still like at uh, that's my lobster. But, yeah. um, but it you, is. We can skip that question. No, it's okay. I, I mean, I'll just say something stupid that I've never said. I have this weird thing with my thumb, which at my lobster cannot see. But I'm like double jointed. It's not a weird talent. But I just really sometimes like to do it for like meditation. That is purposes. cool. It's kind of fun. It is it only that? Weird. Is it only that know. thumb? No. Yeah, I guess so. This one doesn't really do it. But this one like locks in and out of place I wish I could do this with my body you know like how people do those like that's really cool listeners you have no idea what I'm doing uh, just she, imagine I'm doing something listeners? really cool she's how doing something what do you, how you very she's incredible doing just double jointed in my thumb that's all it's stupid no it's, it's stupid. not I know you have a cooler thing <laughs> at my lobster or whatever that's my lobster, that's my lobster. headgear I had this major gap in between my teeth what in the middle uh huh that's a, a Robertson gap. thing oh wow and <laughs> <laughs> wait, was, wait, what? You got a kick out of the gap. <laughs> wait, Josh, what happened there? Uh, I just uh, right, go continue. <laughs> I was able to shoot. I had this big gap. Mm-hmm. I was able to shoot water <gasps> like over nine feet. Stop. In between. Yep. No, Stop. not nine feet. Oh, Fuck you. Leave her alone. Nine she can feet. exaggerate. Nine I'm feet, telling like, across you, the table. it was impressive. Okay, impressive. But nine feet. It, it, here's the thing. Nine I feet. Had one nine feet is skill. not enough Sim, to be considered hyperbole. Do not hyperbole, take this take away, away from me. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't downplay her really exciting <laughs> skill. Like, okay, well, it wasn't I nine was feet short, <laughs> and I had headgear. Okay, <laughs> don't take right. my nine feet away from me. <laughs> you can have your nine feet. She's got great teeth now, though, <laughs> ladies and gents. Look at them shiners. Yeah, they are really pretty. Nice well, thank you. Very yeah. Much. Ding ding ding. <laughs> um, okay, I like your uh, I like your thumb. Mm-hmm. That's so, so weird. I, I like your weird. thumb. <laughs> That's so <laughs> gross. <laughs> okay, here's a hypothetical. Okay. <clears throat> You're 17 years old. Mm-hmm. You have a massive crush mm. on a guy named Hudson. Oh, I like that name. I would be I would be into a guy named Hudson. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> right. We debated a lot about the we, we, we're thinking about really? the, What should yeah. the name be? Yeah. What's, yeah. 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 Okay, he's a musician, mm-hmm. an artist, mm-hmm. very handsome, Oof. slightly elusive. Oof. And you and a bunch of friends are going on a camping trip together. Ooh. Okay. Um, you're going to a place that sort of looks like that. Well, descri- Anna, describe that, that, that picture right there. Fuck you, Sam. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm now. I'm getting abusive with it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> listeners. Um, okay, so the the picture that I'm pointing to is uh, it's um, it's I think it's in uh, France. It's sort of a picture of the Mediterranean. There's a exotic cliff um, into the like the sea or whatever. But here's what's happening. Okay. Okay. You guys are probably in like Utah or something mm-hmm. like that. And it's a big, deep lake. You know that it's going to be safe. I know for sure it's going to be safe. You know for sure it's going to be safe. Great. But Mm -hmm. he would find it super sexy and hot. Yes. If you guys jumped off a 20-foot cliff together. Yes. You would? That's the question. Would I do the clutch? Okay. How, 20 foot, 20 feet? 20, 20 feet. You gotta imagine 20 feet. It's actually a lot higher than I know, I know. I have to imagine 20 feet because that does sound kind of high. And I am like slightly afraid of like the belly flop situation. Um, I'm just wondering, do you like 20 feet's not that enough? high. 20 feet's not that high. 20? Oh my God. I am so calling it's you not, on this. It's not. I cannot wait. Do you know what we're doing? Do you know what we're doing? You're about to go on next a cliff month? dive. Yep. <laughs> I am going to force you to jump off a 20-foot cliff. It's just a you little... It's, it's, never, it's a little Sim, over three of me. It's not Sim, that much. You would never in a million years jump off a 20-foot cliff. Are you kidding me? 20 feet you, is not you that You don't high. even get in a pool. I know. I won't go in a pool. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> you asshole. Come on. No, I think, I think the, the number should be much higher than 20 feet. 
Oh man, Josh, come on! Really challenging me, Josh. Here. Please, I would, help. I would say thirty. Thirty. 30 35, okay, thirty. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I'm sorry. I, would go, I would go higher than that. It's getting was, really difficult. I, yes. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I like having Josh here. I have some little you know, yeah. male backup. Yeah, you need some here. balance. I know. You know what? It's making me feeling though. I, I love having Josh here too, but it's making me feel weirdly a little more bullying towards you. I'm sorry, <laughs> Tim. I'm sorry. <laughs> she feels like you have support now, so yeah, you can I know. really I know. take so, it. Exactly. Now I can really. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> Here's the True. thing about the the jump with the guy and like you know you're going camping and you're with a group. I mean the thing is is I would never be cool being like yeah let's go and then like getting up there and being like I don't know um it's a little scary mm, ah what my belly like I would be really I would hate me just being the one to like back out last minute you know and like ruin it for everyone else. So I think I would have to do something like like um. You go first. No, I don't know. I would have to. I would. Ha- I would have to do it, but I'd have to like really suppress my fears as well, which would be difficult for me. So um, maybe I'd wait like the second day. Would there be multiple days? Multiple days Could in Britain. That is it? an honest and beautiful answer. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. I really tried to think about it, and you know, take it all in, consider it, and that's my answer. Final well, answer. You aced the not so rapid fire. You aced it. Good job. I'm glad it wasn't rapid fire. <laughs> Fired for real. <laughs> um, yeah, I. Uh, oh gosh, I've done some dumb things for hot dudes. Man, <laughs> the boys always get you. <sighs> they do. Would Gross. you jump with Chris? Now? Well, yeah. No way in hell. To- <laughs> oh, here he loves me. I love him. Yeah. I would be like, baby. Listen, why are we doing this? This is ridiculous. He wouldn't ask you to do that. Why are we doing this? No, yeah, I mean, we're too old. (laughs) (laughs) But, but, but there are things that I would, that I would do. And it will. You're super surprisingly athletic. Mm. I've seen you ski. I talked. I talked about this with oh, Anne the other day. Josh, she's a, so she's Josh, a good skier, but she's also she's like, like graceful. Yeah. Super yes. Graceful. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. That's a day, you know, she's that's a really a good nice. skier, but she's also she's also like good at working out. Like when she gets what? into it. No. When Chris Chris wow. when, when, when Chris makes her do these like you know workout drills and, and she, uh. she like does them like a champ. It's well, unbelievable. She's pride, you guys. Yeah. So, totally. Thank you. That you you I've seen me you do it. Heart. I was impressed. <laughs> He's like really a drill sergeant. Is. He makes you. He, he puts you to work, and oh, you and you no. nail it every it's single time. Awful! Oh, it's horrible. The pressure. Speaking of pressure, that sounds. Do not cool. marry a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard life. But, um, you guys, thank you. That really actually made me blush, and I really appreciate that because I um, I d- I don't have a lot of confidence in that area. You should fancy yourself <laughs> athletic. These fine men are considering you so. Thank Come on. You. Absolutely. Thank you, Barry. Very much, you guys. All about it. Um, okay, so we're are we, are we calling? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay, we're doing a call. Woohoo! This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Warby Parker. Warby Parker was founded with a rebellious spirit and the lofty goal of creating boutique quality eyewear at a revolutionary price point. Sunglasses, with or without a prescription, start at $95 and, just like eyeglasses, are available through their home try-on program. You just choose five pairs and see which ones you like. I was surprised by how quickly they arrived, which presented me with the immediate problem of deciding which ones to keep. I loved all of them, so you can guess what happened. And not only can you feel good about how cool you look, you can also feel good knowing that for every pair of glasses sold, Warby Parker distributes a pair of glasses to someone in need through partnerships with nonprofits like Vision Spring. Offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams, Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores. So put your FSA or HSA dollars to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. 
Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash unqualified. That's W-A-R-B-Y-P-A-R-K-E-R dot com slash unqualified. This episode of Unqualified is brought to you in part by Osea. Wondering what to gift your friends and family this holiday season? Female founded over 25 years ago by a mother and daughter team, Osea's award-winning cleansers, serums, face moisturizers, and body products give you the results you want. Skin that looks and feels amazing. I recently got to try Osea's new body butter, which, like their now famous Andaria Algae Body Oil, transforms dry skin without being greasy, has the same incredible scent, and leaves your skin soft, smooth, and healthy looking. If my experience is any indication, you can count on your partner giving you a lot of compliments. This holiday season, stock up and share your new favorite clean skincare and body care with your friends and family. Unqualified listeners get 10% off your first order with promo code ANA at oseamalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order, and orders over $50 get free shipping. Gifting is always easier if you start early, so head to oseamalibu.com. Use code ANA. I'm so excited. This is so fun. Okay. Are you having a good time? Oh, I'm so great. glad you're here. Yeah, me too. All right, the tough questions are over. Now we talk about other people's We're about lives. To call em- Emily now. She's 25. She's in Brooklyn. Emily. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Brooklyn. We're calling Kate. No, I'm sorry. We're calling. Oh yes, my God. we are calling. What Kate. a brilliant producer! <laughs> We're calling Kate. We're calling Kate. Hello. Hi, Sim. Hi, Kate. Hello. Hey, is this Kate? Hi, yeah, this is Kate. Hey, Kate. It's Sim. How are you? Hi, Kate. Hi, how are you? Anna's here, and so is Britt Robertson. Hi, Kate. How is it going? Oh my God, this is nuts. I wish that this was like not a scenario where I tell you about how many of my friends are all train wrecks. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I mean, not excited, but you just excited to talk to you, and, and the fact that you want to talk to us is really cool. Well, we're excited to talk about your friends, and and um, and hopefully Britt and Anna are going to be able to give you some advice, but Kate, um, this this scenario is, is common, it's, and this is the first time that we're actually exploring this on the show. So you want to know if you should tell your friend that her boyfriend cheated on her with another one of your friends. So tell us a story, and then we're going to jump right in. Yeah, so just like a little bit of background, um, we all went to college together, and my friend and her boyfriend have been together for like six or seven years at this point. Um, and he was up in um, New York where another one of my really good friends lived. And they were, like, out with, like, a big group of people. And he ended up back at her apartment, and they were, like, really drunk. And they, whoa, like, whoa, whoa, didn't, sorry, like, sorry, sorry, sex Kate, or hang anything. On. Hang on, Kate. But they Kate, made Kate, out. Kate, hang on for a second. Yeah. Kate. So, Kate, wait. So, he he went back to another one of your friends, just to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Their apartment. They're all really wasted. Went back. I just, yeah. I just wanted to clarify that the potential hookup was with mutual friends. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. So, and they ended up like, just like making out a little bit and then he wanted to like spend the night, but he like threw up in her sink <laughs> and she made him leave. Mm. Um, and now we just don't know what to do because like on one hand, like, I know that my friend's boyfriend is cheating on her and like how could I not tell her that? But on the other hand, like they've been together for almost like seven years and like my boyfriend and him are friends and like we all run in the same circles and yeah. like and the other Oh yeah, thing sorry is Go. like Oh no, I'm sorry. Is that like he's like such like a terrible boyfriend and we've all like thought for years that he's cheating on her. And, like, he is. Yeah, but, right. um, but she's, like, turning, like, a blind eye to it. Mm. So it's, like, it seems like she doesn't want to know. Mm. And, like, do I want to ruin her relationship? I just, oh, I just don't know. Okay. 
I have a question. Just a one question. Was it just the makeout, and then he threw up in the sink, and she made him leave? That's the that's the scenario. Yeah, that's the just scenario. The okay, yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Go. All right. So here's my theory: is that whenever a man, uh, well, I shouldn't say man, but whenever sort of the story is painted as um, there was just a kiss. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that is a total cop out. That that there was definitely a lot more happened. But if rumors ever started to fly, mm-hmm. at the very least, some like there's at least a little bit of a cover story mm. that's already been planted. Um, so it sounds to me like they probably had sex. <laughs> and he well, didn't. another another one of my friends was there, and like they definitely like didn't. I have that. Well, okay. Yes. Okay. Listen, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't presume that any, anybody is, um, is guiltier than, than they are. But, um, but I, I gotta say though, I, I think Kate, I think you probably have to stay out. Yeah. I think that he's, he sounds like he's, uh, you know, but, but you know, the people that I've dated in the past that have cheated on me. Um, my friends that have tried to tell me, I didn't listen to mm-hmm. them. In fact, I viewed them as kind of enemies mm-hmm. because I couldn't, I didn't, I wasn't in a position to hear them yet. And that's it. I think if she's not in the position right now to, to really, if she's turning a blind eye and, and that's sort of what you're saying, then maybe, maybe that's what she wants to know. Everything that she's sort of exposed herself to is probably what she, that's the only thing she's willing to hear and, uh, and and um, act on, you know, like yeah. doesn't sound like she's going to be willing to break up with this guy if he is a terrible boyfriend already, even if she doesn't know about the, the making out. I'm sure there's other stuff too. After some of my like a couple of my breakups, where I found up that I found out that like some guys were cheating on me, I felt mad at my friends who knew that weren't telling me. But I also, but that was so temporary because mm-hmm. later on I felt like. Of course, because because later on, like you know, after a couple of weeks, it felt like oh, I just wouldn't have heard them. Mm-hmm. I would never have listened to them. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't have. I, I would have been defensive because I'm a proud person. And anyway, is so, there a difference between if uh, if this is a one off compared to an ongoing thing? Mm-hmm. If, like if he continued to make out with her, or if, or, or or if the making out turned into sex. Um, like w- this seems to me like I'm hoping that this may be a one off in, mm-hmm. in which case maybe she can just like cut but what if it was something that what if this is the type of guy that he is and he's going to do it again well if he's doing it in front of multiple friends already yeah that's what I'm saying it's not a one off it's not a one off right. he's, he's not he's hiding jerk. it yeah but uh, Sim do you think that there is an idea of one offs yeah uh, does that well, exist I, uh, listen yeah. I don't I, I think I, it exists like you're a cheater or you're not. Yeah. Like, doesn't it get easier? Like, once you do it, doesn't mm-hmm. it get sort of easier to sort of? Yeah, I, I feel. I feel like this guy will can, will do it again. Yeah. And then it's it's gonna it's it's just it's just going to be one of those situations where it's it's not going to get any better. And I don't. Do you guys really feel like you should just just stay off? Yeah. And, off? and if that's the case, if he's going to do it again, then you just wait for him to crash that ship. You know. Okay. I th- I mean that's what I think. Yeah. Because otherwise, because because I don't want her to your friend to turn against you. Exactly. And- who knows how loyal she is to this guy, and then that's going to become an even more. Yeah, and the messenger. There is that ugh. truth that there's like, oh, being the messenger is a horrible thing. Yeah, and you're gonna and, have to live with that, sister. But I, <laughs> uh, but I do think, I do think that you could say something like, you know, especially if like if an if, you know if he proposes to her Boy. or something like that like if suddenly things start to really ramp up I think maybe you could say you know I I always want to be your friend um, I'm here for you no matter what um, and and maybe very very delicately I don't know what quite the wording will be yet but uh, dance around the issue you know sort of the idea of like maybe not um I sure I would, you would wait until they get the engagement. No, because, I, because wouldn't 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 she start to resent her even more if they waited that long? It's like you're telling. What do you me mean, this. really? Yeah, I think that. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that 
I don't think I just don't think that Kate should get involved until it, but if there is a scenario where her friend gets engaged right get, getting ready to be married yeah there may be a point if it's appropriate where it's just like if you ever have any questions are you you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Or if you want right. to talk about this, are you completely sure? Something. Kate, like, where like, is this relationship heading? Yeah. Well, so, like, we're, we're like, 25, 26, and we've been together for, like, seven years. Mm. So, like, I mean, within the next few years, like, if they don't break up, like... I think that it's, you know, very reasonable to expect that they're going to get engaged. Mm-hmm. Oi. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, this is man. A t- this oh, is a tough man. one. I think you, uh, you know what? It sounds does it sound awful, but I feel like you have to stay out. Yeah, I mean, I agree, I agree, and and th- there will come a. I do feel that there will come a time where she may come to you if you stay out of it enough, and you're not like constantly dropping really you. exactly. Yeah. You know, don't be like subtly dropping hints like he's cheating on you. You know, if you if you support her, then there will come a time where I'm sure she reaches out and says like, I don't know, he seems a little bit shady business, you mm-hmm. know, and then at that point you can be like. Well, I, I I might have heard some rumblings of a makeout right, session right, with a friend, right. you know, something I don't know, but or just or even just like you know, you can just say I want you to be the happiest you can be. Yeah, and there's absolutely no reason you need to get married at this age yeah. or whatever, or and be like, with this person if you feel yeah. any hesitation at all. Yeah, you know. Okay, a question for Britt and Britt, Anna. You are so wise. <laughs> no question for you guys. You now, are. is there a difference between is uh, making out and sex? Like, what if what if like so is. is is, is 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 kissing cheating? Like what? Where do yes. you define it? Yeah, kissing's cheating. If, okay, but it's, now, but, but is is there a difference now? Let's let's say let's say it wasn't just making out and throwing up. Let's say if it was like full on sex. Does she tell? Does she tell her friend? No. I mean, I think that's the same 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 case thing. Scenario. So you're, keep, I mean, you're putting that this as the same. Right? Yeah, yeah. But for me, it's you have to look at sort of the the big picture, which is first of all, he's doing this in a group of mutual friends, which mm-hmm. is telling because he doesn't really care that much right um and he's trusting you guys to to hold that information which is ridiculous um and you know secondly i think you have to look at the fact that like yeah he was making out and he wanted to stay you know but she kicked him out so like those are like what are his intentions and Mm -hmm. and in those moments you you kind of have to evaluate well is making out really different from sex if he actually just really wanted to have sex but he Mm -hmm. couldn't um In that regard, I sort of hold it as being the same thing. You know, gotcha. If you wanted to. I feel like Kate knows the... I don't know. I feel like... Kate, yeah, Kate knows the... Like, you you get a vibe. Mm-hmm. Like, you... As women, you get a vibe. Mm-hmm. If a dude wants to bone you, you get a vibe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but- I love it when I say bone, because <laughs> yeah. my, my mom loves it when I say bone. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, like, do you think that it would be appropriate for, like, my friend who, like, made out with him to tell her? Like, yes, she's kind of torn also. She's like, should I? Because, like, she would, but she doesn't want to, like, I, make I, things worse. I couldn't live with that. There's no way I could live with that. How could you live with that if you're a real friend? I don't know. How can you live with that? It'd They're all so friends, hard. right? So, the, so um, both, yeah. Okay, everyone, okay. you guys are all, okay, gotcha. It's so tough. <laughs> oh, boy. So tough. The, the two girls aren't, like, super close, but, like, okay. um, it's, it's one of their birthdays next month, and, like, the other mm-hmm. one is, like, invited to, like, mm-hmm. her birthday in a different city. Like, one of them lives in New York, and the other one lives in D.C., and, like, so she like waits for the birthday, birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to go to the event, and then I, you know, I, I think that she should gracefully back out. Yeah, and then write that's, her like a nice letter. Yeah, that's the right ah. thing to do, honestly, because you do have to. I mean, no matter how drunk you are to like make out with. I, well, I guess she's oh. not that great. Of and friends, you know but that it was more than a make out. Yeah, I know. I mean, Kate, do you think it was more than a make out? It was totally more than I a make out. I don't think that it was more than a make out. I think that. My friend told me, like, the whole story. I'm, like, pretty confident in the story that she told me. Kate, I love you, but I got to tell you. <laughs> You'd be wrong, there, there girl. Was, there, were, there, were, there was some genitalia touching. <laughs> I want to believe you, Kate. I want to believe I want to believe it was just uh, a make out. Yeah, because she needs, because your friend has to also have, like, uh, you know, everyone has their own agenda here. But um, I would... I, I, you know, I, I don't think that you, 
it's this isn't this isn't your problem to fix. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think that your friend, and I don't know even if you feel like you should tell her this or not, but I do feel like your friend should um, bow out of the birthday party um, and 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 do what sort of she thinks is sort of ethically responsible. Yeah. And, and whether that's like sort of writing the friend a letter, she doesn't necessarily have to confess everything, but um but but your but your friend who is the guilty party mem- mm-hmm. member needs to do some soul soul searching. Yeah, for sure. And soul. and uh and and that's and and you know and and you don't really have to you don't really have to do yeah that's not your responsibility yeah. it, this but, is a lot on you I, already I know Kate. I know do you, I, do you think that she should talk to her friend and say look you really need to reach out you know via letter or however it is do you think that I don't think I I don't know if I I think I think that all she should say is uh, I think all Kate should say to her friend is like listen. Um, there's probably going to be a time when this information is going to be revealed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because that is what happens. Mm-hmm. That's just what happens with life. Yeah. Um, so I'm not quite sure if you should go to the birthday party. Um, I'd love to talk to you more about it. How long ago did this happen? How long ago was this? Did you say? This happened on Saturday. Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> can you swear on these podcasts? Yes, you can. <laughs> I censored Absolutely. myself really fast. This is R rated. You um, can do you okay, want. cool. Well, shit. <laughs> um, no, Saturday. That's very recent. Okay, so we, we're making some moves here. Quick. Yeah, yeah <laughs> okay. that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Wait, does your friend like him? Mm. Is, is your friend in love with him? Mm. Oh, well, so then that's the other thing. So, like, Dave had, like, this super long like fairly inappropriate flirtation for like years and years and years. So like she definitely like wanted this to happen, but now that it's happened, she's Ugh. like she at least says that like she's like totally over it. She's lying. Oh, she's, she's totally over it now. She is she's I am totally so lying. <laughs> suspicious of her. Okay. No, I'm now This is too good. Yeah. She's uh, she's revealing her hand. I'm over it. Okay. No, 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 no. What I want to know this girl's name. No, just because I hate calling her the girl. Um but you know, that is that's definitely that's not so great. That's not no. so hot. That's not looking no. good in her core. No, 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 no. no, 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 no I, I think no. now I think she's I'm, dangerous. Maybe Do not maybe let her around your man. No. Maybe maybe the advice right now at this point is just let it play out and not do anything. I yes. definitely think so. If yeah. it just happened Saturday, I yeah. do think there are going to be be some moves made on uh, you know from other people, not not you, but yeah. Oh, I would be running so far. Yeah. This would scare me so badly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, no offense, I, Kate. I get it. it. We all like have it. Both but. party members are incredibly dangerous. They <laughs> they are bound for. This is bound. This is implosion waiting to happen. Yeah. And I just want to protect you, yeah. so you're not caught in the middle of some kind of weird messenger know, of Kate. bad news. Jeez. So I would steer clear yep. because this is fire waiting to happen. Yes. Yep. Don't go down with that house. No, <laughs> it, I, I, protect your soul. Yeah, um, it's going not to, to sound dramatic because because I bet you anything too, Kate. You're not the only one that knows. It's going to come and out. It shouldn't come out. For, it shouldn't come from you, or you shouldn't be in, involved at all because it will come out at some point. It's yeah. going to totally come it's out. Happening. Because yes, yes. Oh boy. Oh, Anything boy. else? Any other questions, Kate? I mean, we, I don't know if I'm helping, but I'd you, like to no, know if no, you have you any other are. questions, Kate. But it, if it comes out and it comes out that I knew and I didn't tell her that her boyfriend was cheating on her, isn't that worse? Uh, yes and no. I think. I think what you said earlier, speaking to the, you know, um, you're mad for a little bit. But yeah. then you realize, like, you wouldn't have listened to, uh, anyway. That's right. That's right. And I think that you, you know what? Maybe tonight you write a letter in advance that you do not send. <gasps> and you say, listen, I was really worried that this day would come. And I've written you a letter of apology because I sort, I knew, I heard some rumors. I heard some things. I didn't know what to do. And I love you so much yeah. and I care about you and you're my number one priority. And this is a letter that I, uh, that I've, I just, I've just been thinking about you. Mm-hmm. Listen, that's all anybody wants. Mm-hmm. 
just mm. to know that they were a priority and that you right. were yeah. first and foremost. I mean, clearly you yeah. were worried enough about her that so many people have put, like you said, yeah. Sam, like we're uh, like so many people are put in this position. Exactly. Mm. It's a terrible position to be in and it, it never gets easier. I mean, just hearing it now, I'm like, impossible. But yeah. it, you know, it does happen to so many people. Cause, cause you really own. are in a lose, lose, <sighs> lose, it's, lose. It's like, you really are losing being the messenger and yeah, you're losing not telling her, but I do think it's a greater. I, I think it's it's losing more if you are the messenger yeah. than actually being sort of the secret keeper. Yeah, it'll be a it'll be less of a hit. And um, all you know is that you know they made out. That's all you know. Yeah, and who even knows? You know, because it's it's just like secondhand information to you as well. Mm, so that's right. To be just, um, you know, I think it's when you when it does come out and you do have that conversation, you just sort of have again that this conversation, which is I was so conflicted, I went on. You know, on us podcasts to talk to people and try and get some <laughs> some insight. You know, and if you have like a letter ready to hand her to, like a handwritten letter. Telling her like you were dreading this day, yeah, that would mean it, like any reasonable, any good friend would just love that. It goes so far, yeah, it's true. It's very handwritten true. as opposed to yeah, type. like a handwritten letter that she's written and she just yeah. keeps for the day that all this mess comes to surface. Because I, I, yes. sadly, I think it will. Kate. Thank Kate. you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Kate. I really hope that uh, we were able to help you. Oh, okay. You were guys were so much of a help. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate well, okay, it. Okay, let us know let us what's know happened. What happens. And also, if you need us to um, to reach out to your friend, if the you know when the shit goes down, um, I'd we'll, be happy to. We'll, yes. <laughs> we're, we'll, we're, we'll, we're, we're. we'll try to help her, and we'll we'll defend you as yeah. well. Absolutely, I'd be happy of to course. hand her the hammer. We no, have I'm been. We like, there's there's a lot of people in this room that have, that have been in that situation. We're and on, a lot we're, of we're on Team Kate, and, team Kate and thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Good night. Is my Indian food burning? I took it out. Oh, thanks. I took it out. Well done. Thank you. Look how proud he is. <laughs> you, I took it out. Oh, Josh, you look so handsome. Thanks, buddy. Look how handsome I Josh. do have a question, Let's... though. So you, I missed some of that because I was taking the Indian food out. <laughs> do you, you don't tell Sim if his girl's cheating on him then? Is that what I got from that? Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Wait, no, wait. this is hypothetical. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's a good oh, No, but that's, yeah, but that's, that's interesting. Because I, I would tell him. You would um, tell him. Well, here's yeah, the thing. Well, I would tell my. I, I gotta say, I, I would tell thing. any of my yeah. guy friends. It's a I guy. Would, and I and I. To be honest, I've done it before, and 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 my friend was like, "Thank you so much for telling me," because if you didn't tell me, nobody else was going to tell me, and you just saved me. Just wow, agony. I would totally with Sim specific. <laughs> just me. <laughs> also, no. there are certain, you know, I have a lot of female friends who are like highly emotional, very sensitive um, when it comes to relationships that they are not like in the best place with, you know? So a, a lot of times it depends on where that person is in the relationship and how comfortable they feel and how confident they are in their own self. So I think it is like case by case basis. People are going to be w- more willing to hear that information if they're like strong in their self. Right. And of course, um, and, and also if they're picking up their own vibe, That's but it so just, wise. De- yeah. just depends. It depends on who you're talking to really. That's true. You guys seem close, so it would be nice. It would be the nice thing to do, I guess. I, I think so. You'd have to tell him. Oh yeah, I totally I would. So. I would. I would. Lock I would, it I would, I would up. But you just <laughs> figure <told>. it out. <laughs> you need to but, figure it out soon, right? But there's a little. I have a reason why. I specific to Sim. Well, I have a a little bit of a reason why. Um, and it has to do with a little bit of a gender difference, mm-hmm. which I don't really want to believe. Yeah. But I do believe that there is a little bit of a gender difference. I have this can you, conversation can you, ex- can you explain that? Bro code? Well, Is that what you mean? No. You mean you're meaning bro code? No. I'm meaning that um, because uh, I am a woman mm-hmm. who loves to indulge in... You know, gossipy, advicey mm-hmm. stuff. That's why I started a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, 
but so so information coming from me or maybe hopefully not me i mean i'm 39 hopefully it's not but you know me at 23 Mm -hmm. if i'm the bearer of bad news um i i know now at my age that that will be held against me and not necessarily believe believe but you know like not there's a lot to weigh Mm -hmm. there's a whole lot Mm -hmm. to weigh as opposed to now at my age yeah when if i knew something atrocious like i of course i would be like completely different deal you're right it's yeah it's Oh, so you're saying because that girl was 25, you're I, like, I was going to say, it's involved. gender difference, but also like the age, age difference, difference, the mat- yeah. maturation sort Absolutely. of situation. Yeah, because no, it, I, it, it, it all plays into it. It just yeah. does. I just know how I would have been, and I would have been mad. I would have been mad at the, the messenger. Yeah. Right. And um, because I was, I lived that. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So, if it were me, I mean, I'm 20, I just turned 26. If it were me in, in that girl's situation and somebody told me that my boyfriend of five, six, seven years, uh, was cheating on me with a girl I knew, I'd be like, uh-huh, F you, right. fuck you. I can uh, say fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be like, get out of here. And I find myself to be like, kind of, of course I'm going to say this. I'm pretty mature. You know, I feel like I've lived a long life. No, but I do feel like I'm a reasonable human you being. Are you know? incredibly Thank you. mature, smart, Super and mature, reasonable. Bro. But yeah. still I would be like, Fuck off, you know, get mm-hmm. out of, I'd also be offended that somebody, you know, put themselves in right. my relationship that's personal to me. And I think that's a big issue probably with, um, you know, with just like pride. And so that's what, that's what yeah. I think too, that the, a little bit of the gender and youth difference, mm-hmm. because especially, you know, I think that women I don't know if I'm right about this, but women tend, I don't know. Do you guys think I was about to put, I was about to put forth the the theory that women were, uh, the women are wanting a more secure relationship sooner Mm -hmm. and just more steadily Mm -hmm. than men. Just like stability at a, at a, at a, at just at a, at a younger age, younger, just yeah. like quicker than, right. And it's not even like a, you know. So therefore, if I had, t- if I tell a guy friend of mine, oh, you know, Sherry. Sherry. I'm telling you, Sherry's friend, getting Sherry. it on. <laughs> Sherry, Sherry has huge tits. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I can see them now. <laughs> Sherry is... <laughs> Hitting on Ryan like nobody's business. <laughs> He'd be like, "Cool, moving on to the next." <laughs> I feel like that. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some men are are more into like, you know, this is my woman and she will be my woman. And um, but I do feel like a lot of guys at that age, in particular, are kind of like, "Cool, moving on. She's cheating. Let's find the next." Whereas women, you know, um, sometimes we just get like our claws into someone and we're like, "This is going to be the guy. I've worked so hard. I put seven years into this man." You you know, and like this is where my heart is. It's much more difficult for for a woman to maybe move past that and and then have yeah. to deal with the cheating factor. Yeah. Ugh, what a drag! What a Poor drag! Poor sister. Cheating, cheating is never fun. A drag. <laughs> Let's talk about Mother's Day. Oh sure, yeah, okay. Um, First of all, it's Gary Marshall, who is just the an absolute soul. legend. And, if and anyone, also a legend, yeah. And if anyone who's not familiar with, with Gary Marshall, Pretty Woman and Overboard. I just found out Overboard. Oh, my gosh, yes. I just found out that he did, and I didn't even know this. I should really look up his resume. But he did this movie called The Other Sister. Do you know this movie? Yeah, Juliette Lewis and, yes. and uh, Juliette Yes, Lewis yes. Yeah. which yeah. I just think is like such a beautiful film. And I <clears throat> didn't even realize that he that he wrote and directed that film. And he's done so many wonderful, wonderful films. Pretty Woman was like... Pretty Woman was actually the first movie it's I ever went to see. Gross, though, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean on Richard Gere, <laughs> Joey Roberts. She was also 16 I when she mean, shot, shot her or It's like, doesn't really it romanticize? Like, <laughs> prostitution. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but come on, it's so no, glamorous. It, it's, oh, it's so wonderful. Prostitution, what a life. It is so wonderful. It made me want to move to LA and just hit up Hollywood Boulevard, you know, <laughs> with my like wig. You, can I be your pimp? Sure, yeah, just find me some like, you know, decent <laughs> clients, you know? Can or not. You, okay. How much money do you want per You can lowball me if you want to start low, and then if we can up can the ante. Can do, like, 75 bucks? 75 bucks? <laughs> for, like, a blowgy? Or, like, what are we talking? The, the full meal deal for 75 bucks? Please. My mom would be ashamed. I'll protect you. I'll protect you. <laughs> I'll protect you. Okay, okay. How much are you getting is the real question. Mm, I mean, Let's talk about that later. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah so, so he's done Pretty Woman. <laughs> yeah, though, so Mother's Day, though, it's a, it's part yeah. of that whole series that he's directed. Um, Valentine's Day. There's Valentine's Day. Day there's New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. And, and Mother's Day. And Overboard. Cast, Overboard. Well, that's not part of the series, Anna. It is. You've missed a step, clearly. <laughs> I know, but you know that's my favorite movie. It, oh, by, movie. Did you know that, by the way? Anna's favorite movie of oh, all time is Overboard. That I didn't know. Overboard. Yeah. That, that's your all-time favorite movie? Yes. That's so cool. <gasps> I just love, I love the golden harness in that. What song is that? From Overboard? Yeah. What part? Different people. What? I know the okay. movie. All right. Tell me. I don't know what you're doing this weekend. Okay. But you are coming over here. We're screening of over, Overboard. Yes. All right. All right. I'd love right. that I'm more gonna than I'm going to drug you. Oh. And you were going to memorize... Oh, like that's all what I need to of, do. Uh, you're going to memorize the whole movie. The whole movie. movie. Oh, there's so many good scenes. I eat a bug. Yes, that's good. <laughs> I know when she first you comes to that. yeah, when she first comes to the house. All right, all right. The all kids, right. You're, getting, you're getting more impressive. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And then you know sh- uh-huh. they feed her food. They're torturing her. Okay. How about this? Okay. Here's a quiz question. Okay. Okay. At the very end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I know the mint. Yep, I'm there. Okay, I'm Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. Um, you can make me do a line. Yeah. Oh, pff, I lose. I lose. <laughs> no, come on, come okay, on. Okay, fine, on. fine. I'll play. Okay. What can I possibly give you that you don't already have? The kids. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what she responds with, but Close. that is actually Close. a really good answer. By the way, she didn't you, have the kids before. I, I would have bought it. Yeah, I don't know. It's a stupid way to end the movie, though. What does she say? Tell me. A little girl. A little girl. Is that what she says? That is close. And she says it weirdly like that. Uh, does she? Oh my God. A little girl. <laughs> <laughs> like slightly, slightly creepy, like a serial killer. I love that. A little girl. <laughs> I want you to reenact all of Overboard. She's really genius in that movie. Different people. That's wonderful. Wonderful. So, getting back to Mother's Day. This is an amazing cast. Amazing cast. Get back to me. Incredible. We talked about. We we talked. We already talked about earlier. So, there's an incredible cast. It's an incredible cast. Besides you, there's Jennifer Aniston, Kate Hudson, Jason. You only need me. You only need you. You're the star of the movie. There's no one else in the movie besides you. It's just me, guys. Go see it. (laughs) Star Mother's Day. No. Um. Yeah. Julia Roberts is in it. She plays my mom, which is cool. And then also Kate Hudson's in it. She plays my friend with a baby. Maybe, which is cool. Um, Jason Sudeikis. He has a kind of sad storyline. Oh, oh, yeah. Aww. I won't tell you because you may want to cry in the movie, and this could be it. Mm. He this dies. He died. No, Gary Marshall's not killing off people in this movie. <laughs> he loses joking. money. He loses, loses a small degree of money. <laughs> he has a small degree, but just enough to still live on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it's cool. It's a really cool cast. I mean, it's you know. It's fun. It's fun. I don't know. And it's out in theaters right now, so please go, go check it out. Go see it. Okay, so now listen. Yeah. Do you want to be a mother? Okay, good question. A lot of people have been asking me this lately, so I I've know. actually had to think about it. Well, no, not just you, it's but not like a good even... a question. It's a horrible question. No, even like my mom. She's like, do you want to have kids? I'm like, well, you've never asked me this before. Now, because I have a movie coming out called Mother's Day, and I'm like, Mom, you want to know if I want to have kids? So, Mom, if you're listening, I'll tell you right now. <clears throat> I would like to have kids. You would? I would like to have eight kids. 
No. Oh my God, can you imagine? <laughs> that would be crazy. This is wonderful. Um, I found my surrogate. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did, did, did we read somewhere that you're one of seven? I am one of seven, yeah. So that's why I'm only going to have like that's one insane. or two. And you're, maybe. The, you're, the, you're the oldest. I'm the oldest. Yeah, wow. I know. I know. So you do want to have potentially. I think so, but like so much later. So much later, right? I totally. Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I gotta figure some stuff god. out. I've gotta like do me, as they say. Oh my god! Because I want to be like good. I want to be like one of those really good moms who's like you know oh, selfless. I'm a bad mom, and I had True. my child eight, at, like at a late age. Was, yeah, sort of relatively. You're so, the best mom, by the way. Don't, uh, you agree? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're the most amazing mom. But no, I'm bad and She's not. old. <laughs> At least you don't look old. You look like a really young mom. Hi, <laughs> I'm the youngest mom there is. You could. You could just go to the school and pretend like you're like that Dr. teen mom. Dr. Teitelbaum. Thank you. <laughs> no, but I, I totally... You like, think that's the way to go? Well, I, I, I just... I think that there's so much pressure on... Of course, like a, on being like a woman and having like kids and yeah. and um, and it's a it's a it's a difficult journey. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and I'm grateful that I waited till I was 35 till I met like sort of the love of my life. Yeah. At the same time, now I'm at sort of a position where I'm 39, where I don't know. I mean, I. I I would love to have more kids, but it now is a whole other dialogue yeah. that it wouldn't have been in my early 20s. Right. But I couldn't have, you know, accomplished the, my career goals. Yeah. Yeah. And ultimately, I'm sure, you know, you'll have a better relationship because of it. You know, you're not like resenting your child, even though is that a thing? I feel like once you have a kid, there's there's no resenting the kid. You just like the kid a lot. Right. You, I really like him. Yeah. He's, yeah. It sounds great. <laughs> he's, you seem to love him. <laughs> he's, he's pretty like, funny. He's the best. He's great but, dude. But, you know, but there is it's, it's not resentment towards a child, but it is the resentment towards the lifestyle. Change. Right. The choice. Sure. Especially as a woman. Yeah. Um, and the, because it really does become like, all right, now I like nothing spontaneous can ever happen again. Oh. And like, oh. it's like, okay, so Chris will say something like, let's go out, you know, to, you know, a steakhouse or whatever. Right. And I'm like, okay, that's so I love you, baby. I would love to do that. <laughs> so easy for you to say. <laughs> I got to figure out uh, what, like, if there's a sitter available. Yeah. And, like, if they know the routine. Right. And, like, you know, there, there's, it's just, it's just the, the logistics. And that, and that part is, is difficult. Um, but, you know. I, it's a special thing. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I'm ready. I don't know that I'm ready. Well, and you know what, well, though? Well, you've got plenty of time. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Don't. <laughs> Do not. That is the, that's the worst part is the pressure that we put on ourselves. Yeah. As a society to, like... I mean, I think for me it's less it. pressure because, like, fuck off. I don't care. Um, but I'm a little bit, like... Sounds fun. And then sometimes I'm like, does not sound fun. You know, I go through that w the phase. I had so many girlfriends. I was just talking to my girlfriend about this yesterday. And at like 22, she was like, all I want to do is be barefoot and pregnant, like barefoot and pregnant. She's from Australia and she just wants to be on a beach, like pregnant. And then she that literally. does sound that awesome. That sounds kind of cool <laughs> with the accent too. It's kind of nice. Um, but then literally she hit 23 and she was like, I never want to get married. I never want to have kids. And imagine if she would have just like you know, bitten the bullet right there when she was feeling it. And then a year later, she goes through the phase where, oh, actually, I just want to take some time for me. So I'm constantly like, even if I get that urge of like, kids, family, woo, I'm like, tomorrow I might feel differently. And I probably will. So I'm just going to wait it out. Good. Yeah. Good. Because uh, you know what? There's, there's no rush. No, 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 no. No. Also, I still look so young that I feel like people would judge me for having a kid at this point. Like, how dare you yeah. bringing in another it's child like, in this world with the population control? You're fucking stunning. Oh. And I can't thank you enough. 
Thanks for having me. You've been having me in, here. You've just been such a delight. Oh, but that stop. Yeah. It's so nice. You just having a ball. Smart. And you're and you're you're, you're, you're you are you gave such you're, amazing advice. Yeah, you so did. So fun. Thanks. I wish I was. We loved having you. Can you? Will you? I mean, I would, would love you, to come back. I'm just to gonna like extend really? that. So whenever you feel like you need please, a substitute, please. Yes. Oh, take or, my place. Uh, with, Hey Sim, you don't offer do it this. if you don't mean it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> You're like no, not yeah. I'll just I'll sit I'll sit in the corner and just watch you guys. You guys are awesome together. Thanks. Well, I will be back, so don't leave Good. just yet. Okay, but I will be back. <laughs> I would love that. And congratulations. Oh, thanks on everything. Thanks you too. And the thank podcast. you so much for being my surrogate. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you didn't know that when you came in here, did you? I forgot that I was going to be agreeing to that. <clears throat> Abby, let's go. Um, <laughs> no, I will. Anytime you need babies, I'll just pop them right really? on in and right on out nine months later. Just for you. You totally look like you've got a great uterus. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> So follow, okay. follow us on Twitter and on Instagram at Unqualified. And Mother's Day is out in theaters right now. Britt, we can't thank you enough. Thanks, thank guys. Thank you, Britt, thank so you. much. And, and Josh. 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 Guys, thanks, thanks, Britt, for letting me crash it. Dude, please. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys, can all three of us, the three of us, say together? Yeah. Okay, on the count of three. Fuck, Fuck you, you Sam. Sam. That felt good. Good night, everyone. <laughs> good night. <laughs>